My guest today is a Illinois Rose Bowl team captain. He was an All-American linebacker, one of the greatest to ever play at Illinois. His name is Jay Lehman. What's up, Jay? Tim, I'm doing fantastic. How about yourself? I, I'm, I'm doing well, given the circumstances. You know, we're all having to adjust and adapt a little bit. Uh, what's life been like for you? I, I didn't mention that you're an analyst for BTN, so you spend some of your life still in sports. How is uh, being tucked away in, in the home working out for you? Yeah, it's been a little bit tricky. Well, on the professional side, you know, with the Big Ten Network, I do a lot of work with spring football in the month of April. Uh, Skates will do a couple games. I think Maryland and Indiana, and of course, do the Illinois game as far as spring football goes. And that's when I do a lot of my – and you know this, there's a lot of prep that goes involved so that when the fall comes around, you actually know what you're talking about. There's a lot of new players uh, that you get to know in the spring. So when August 31st and September 1st comes around, you actually know some stuff. Uh, we don't have that to, at all. All that stuff was canceled. Uh, I don't think anybody really cared that spring football was canceled. I cared because I work it, but uh, I mean, I think Mark's Madness in the NBA and baseball is much bigger. So on the professional side, that's been a little tricky. Real estate, which I'm in, has been deemed an essential service, but we have to take a lot of precaution. You know, can't show certain homes and, um, you know, wear gloves and masks and everything with it. Uh, and at home, you know, my kids go to public schools around here. Obviously, those are shut down along with other schools. And so my wife has turned into like the super teacher of, of homeschool. And, you know, they've got like the programs like from like 9 to 12 and then like the reading time. And then I'm the PE teacher. So like from 2.30 to 3.15, uh, you know, Mr. Lehman goes out there and tries to do a couple uh, a couple extras. And usually there's like three things I do like. Some stretches, and we play football, basically. I was going to ask if it's all football all the time. You've just got this whistle and uh, get them going that way. Yeah, I got, we, we got a field behind our yard, so we do that. On the nicer days, we've done a little bit of basketball. I bust out the, the classic PE game kickball. Oh, which sure. Is for young, which is great for younger players because uh, I've got, like, some five- and four-year-olds, and, and football is just, just a little tough for that age. So we busted out, um, kick the can, hide and seek. I mean, we're, we're really going back old school uh, here at the Labor Household. Now, uh, you, have you tried like Foursquare? That's an old school game that uh, has been played in a while. We actually, we actually have a concrete drive. One of the houses in the neighborhood has a concrete drive that uh, with proper social distance, of course, we're able to play <laughs> on that um, because it's, it's, like, it's like partitioned out, you know, divided. by. So we have that. Um, we, bike rides have become a thing. So we are riding the bikes all over. And I got a little one that doesn't ride a bike, but we got a little seat carrier for her. So. Uh, it's kind of tough, man. All the parks are closed. I mean, you can walk through them, but you can't like play in the playground. So like, it's kind of like a time bomb. You take your kids to the park. Like, Let's go play on the playground. They're like, no, you can't. Let's go play with such and such because they live by here. No, you can't. It's almost um, worse, isn't it? To, to go to right. a park and see all this stuff that you can't do. <laughs> no, it's the thing. It's like we, the, the, the pathways and the neighbors that you want to see, you just kind of like wave. And I think for, I think it's tougher for a three, five, seven year old. Like they just don't, it's hard to register like what is going on why can't we do this they might hear corona or covid or whatever but they don't get it so it is such a bizarre kind of feeling the last month i know everybody said that uh we're making do but i think everyone is anxious i know i am i just would love to go to a restaurant and hang out with people yep. even if i didn't talk to anybody i'd love to sit there and eat i'd love to go to el toro or somewhere or papa dell's or little porgies which i've been missing horribly um and just Talk to some people. So hopefully that gets back to normal soon. Takeout is fine, and I don't mind it, but unlimited chips and salsa don't work very well when you're sitting in your living room. You get what you get. When they're gone, they're gone, right? <laughs> no, that's a great point because you all know we can all go to El Toro or any other Mexican place and just eat the chips and salsa. By the time the tacos come or whatever, it's like you can take them or leave them. Kind it's of just, full, you're right? So full, right? <laughs> you're full of the margaritas and, and, and chips. So, and, and what I'm realizing is, and you know this, Tim, is – such a big part of this community is the restaurants is, is the university. Um, I, I mean, we, we get the university calendar for like, Hey, there's the gymnastics event. Hey, here's the, here's the wrestling event, even the smaller stuff, you know, like, Hey, let's go to Huff Hall tonight. And my wife played volleyball. So we catch four or five volleyball games a year. And I know that's a, a fall sport, but the stuff that you just, you really take for granted that what makes this town unique has kind of been taken away. And I think this town's been impacted more because it's such an event-based town um we're, we're really struggling 
So what are you doing at home then? Like when you're confined to the four walls of your house, right. are you a Netflix family, Hulu? Are you playing board games? Um, are you uh, so, doing push-ups? Like what, yes, what's the thing? Yeah, so for me, you know, Monopoly, the classic Monopoly game is the never ending game, right? I mean, it, I mean it, it can literally go on forever. And so I got tired of setting up games every night. So what we did was we were like, oh, let's set up Monopoly. I'll help my five-year-old. Uh, she'll help the eight-year-old. And we just play six rolls a night. So you roll the okay. dice six times and, you know, you buy a property or two, but you never have, you just leave it set up. So you play a game every night, but it's always set up and you don't, I feel any pressure to like finish the game, you know, but if they, they feel like they're doing a game. So we're doing, we're doing that number one. Um, and number two, I think Disney plus subscriptions have skyrocketed, oh. right? No question, right? I mean, yeah. like, between, like, Frozen 2 and Aladdin, the real person movie, like, the one that came out, uh, I think it probably watched those 30 times with my three-year-old, so. Yeah, right. That's what we're doing. <laughs> You know, the uh, the Monopoly thing kind of reminds me of, uh, they used to play chess via mail, like way, way back in the day. Well, a guy oh. would make a move and then they'd send him in a letter what they did and then they'd mail it to a guy in another part of the world and he'd go, oh, that's the move he made. And then they, so it, <laughs> it, it might almost take that long for you guys to finish I mean, a game. I mean, we're, we're still going on it. So um, me, me and my wife are like, hey, it's a game. They like <laughs> it. They're playing it. They're learning about money and real estate and investment, which is, which is great. Um, so we're trying to do that. We're, we're also trying to, um, you know, we're, we're forced really to eat all our meals at home together. Whether we get takeout, we try to support the restaurants, but that's been interesting. So it, it has been good. I, I, I have the, the, the whiteboard over here. So this is where I, I write all the stuff down for my day that I'm going to try to do. And it just keeps me sane. I write 90% of the stuff I write is the same thing I wrote yesterday, but it keeps me sane. Uh, you can see here. Over this shoulder, I have my football helmet, you know, my books, which I try to read a little bit. Uh, I got a jersey that's kind of laying on the ground there. Um, but to remind me of some football stuff. So I'm definitely, definitely getting a little stir crazy. When the weather was bad, it's, it's cooled off here recently. Uh, it makes it a lot tougher. When we get outside, boy, it's great. But there was a couple of days here earlier in April, it was just rain, rain, rain. And it's been tough for the kids. But we've been trying to do the games. We've been trying to do the Disney Plus and the outdoor activities, rinse, repeat, along with homeschool, uh, we're making it happen. I, I don't know if there's any better ideas out there. I'm, I'm open to hear it. Uh, I, I've got, this is the sort of real question here. What are you doing about the hair? D oh, does man. your wife, is she good with scissors? So my wife had trim, can trim my hair if she needs to. I'm, I'm actually giving a shout out to Lee Hansen, a Hansen & Co. barber shop on Neal Street. I miss him dearly because uh, he's been... <laughs> I think he's been closed obviously since the since the lockdown started in the in the March and uh, you know Lee's so packed all the time just because he's so good at what he does. But when you have longer hair, you can kind of hide it. But what starts to look really bad, Tim, is like when you start to get like the ear hair like over there. Oh yeah, you're like preaching to the I, choir. Start, I'm starting to get some. I'm starting to get some wings on there, and uh, <laughs> you know whenever I see that, and, and sometimes you're on camera too. Sometimes when you see that on camera, like, well, I need air cut. That looks oh. bad, right? Um, and you, you probably notice it way more than other people, but I'm kind of at that stage now. I did have a mullet at one time. I don't plan to go back, but if we keep doing this, it's just going to continue to go like that. So I'll probably have my wife try to trim it here if, if, if stuff doesn't open after uh, May 1st. Uh, I, that is a thing for me. Like, I don't know. I've taken, I literally will put my finger along the back of my neck and then try to take a razor and make sure I'm not going too high by going up to my finger and down to try to shave my neck. And I've taken the things over my ears. Right. But that, beyond that, good. I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. And my, my, my thing is that too, like I, the neck hair and the, and the ear hair, yep. I feel like look totally bad on camera. So uh, if there's one little self-consciousness as TV people have, it's probably that, right? I have heard a lot of uh, guys have uh, projects that they're trying to work on these days. Now, I don't know if you get those from your wife or they're just sort of self-inflicted, like I'm going to organize the garage or throw away these clothes. Uh, do you have any projects you're in the middle of or are you that kind of guy or do you pay other people to do question. it? question. So my father was extremely handy, could do everything. Unfortunately, I was just his gopher as a kid. Hey, get me that ladder. Hey, get me <laughs> right. that thing. He never taught me how to actually do anything. I am one of the least handy people I know. My wife loves to do projects and yard work. I mean, if she, if we get a brand new TV, she's setting it up because I can't figure out how to plug in all the cords, right? Uh, but she convinced me that we should get mulch 
So we got some mulch from Country Arbors and, um, you know, had it dropped off. And um, if I get going on a job, like to get me going is hard, but like I can go and I can work it, but don't stop. Once I stop and eat lunch, it's just, <laughs> so I can go and do it. I grew up mowing lawns as a kid. Uh, had layman lawn service here in Champaign County. And, you know, so I did a good number of lawns, 50 to 70 a week sometimes with my brothers. And I just made a commitment that I didn't want to do manual labor the rest of my life. I got so much respect for people that do that. <laughs> but after doing it for 10 years, I was like, man, I better learn how to talk uh, on the TV because that seems a lot easier. <laughs> so when I go out and like mulch on a Saturday, I'm like, man, I sure wish I was about to a football game. So I did mulching. Okay. I did clean out the garage, but like we, we had like a shutter fall off because like these wind storms and stuff. Like, I don't know how to put that back on. Like, I mean, is that like screws or something? Like, well, I, I got to call somebody to help me out with that. So that's the difficult part. I probably give you a run for your money on least handy, although I can get a project started. And if everything goes right, I'm fine. If something goes wrong, I'm done. Like, See, Tim, don't, yeah, exactly. But don't you like, you're doing a project, you're like, this should take an average person 30 minutes. <laughs> right. Three hours later, yeah. right? Yes. And and four wrong screws and two wrong wrenches, you're just like, is it really worth it for me? Who's who's gifted in other areas, but not this, to really try to do this? And I'm like, probably not, but I'm so stubborn that I want to finish it that I'm like, okay, right? There was I a commercial that. back in the day of a guy who was out on his front porch and he was working on the lawnmower and he's like, oh, what could be better on a beautiful spring day than getting out and working on the lawnmower and getting a beautiful lawn? And then there was this record scratch and they show him with lemonade on a, a rocking chair on the porch and it said, paying Bob and Al to do it. And then the service was out there doing, I relate to that commercial so much. <laughs> you know, I, I kind of get out of it because I travel on weekends for in the fall. So like all fall cleanups, all mowing, I, 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 I'm not around to do so. I get out in the fall. Now I'm trapped at home in the spring and I have a lot of trees and whatnot. And I'm realizing, wow, I, did I really want this big a yard with like trees and stuff? Like I, I, I'm cool with the kids played it, but when stuff happens. So I get out of jail free in the fall and I was, I'm usually in the spring cause I'm traveling for spring football. Not so much right now. Yeah. Well, there are, uh, there are downsides to this for sure. And, uh, but, but being gone in the fall with all those leaves is probably the time to be gone. If you're going to be gone. Oh, it's, gone. It's, it's fall cleanup all day, you know, all day fall cleanup. And it's the best money I spend all year because for me to go out there, I try to do it one time and 40, 40 of those like ACE hardware, like brown bags, they yeah. come in, like that always tear, not just cause they're from ACE or anyway, anyway, they always tear. Like you put yeah. like enough, too much in them. It's like, Pfft. I'm just like, I'm done. I'm done with this stuff. <laughs> uh, so I just, I go off a little bit. Do uh, talk about football for a couple minutes. Do your kids have any sort of appreciation of what dad did that, that he was who he was at Illinois or that he got a chance you know, to play they, in the NFL? I think my son's starting to understand it. He's eight. Um, but like most eight year olds, I mean, even though he grows up, he, he's a, he's, you know, watches Illinois all the time. He's a Clemson fan. Why is he a Clemson fan? Because they're winning, right? Right. And they've got cool jerseys and crazy athletes. And, you know, he really likes, you know, he really likes to wear Clemson stuff. Like, he's a kid. I mean, that's what kids do. It's like, oh, man, I want, I want Clemson gloves or I want this because I like – he's not this, but, like, there's a lot of his friends that like Tom Brady. Well, why do they like Tom Brady? Well, because he's good, Right. right. So he's into that. I think he knows a little bit that uh, that I played and stuff and whatnot, and, and we do some stuff. And I was going to actually uh, coach with the Stevens family YMC. I was going to do the flag football league this this spring. I can't coach in the fall because I'm gone, but I was going to coach this spring, and we was going to be uh, we're going to have quite the squad. Me and an old teammate of mine, Justin Harrison, we're going to coach together. Oh, so it was going to be quite a quite a combo, but because uh, he's got a kid about my kid's age. But that got canceled, too. And that's what we were bummed about more than anything. Like, oh, man, we were going to coach this flag football team. So it, it's, it's thrown a lot of different things. But I, I, he knows a little bit. I, I can't imagine the other teams walking in to go, are you kidding me? We're playing who? <laughs> I remember a friend of mine had a little kid who was just starting in gymnastics and walked into the gym. And the other kid in the class, one of the other kids, was uh, Justin Springs' kid. Uh, the head gymnastics coach. Yeah. He, you know, won a medal at the Olympics for gymnastics. And they're like, we should just quit now. It's, it's we, we, we just better. stop, right? Right. right? So, and, and Harrison, he, he's really organized. I mean, he's got like, 
he, he puts a wristband, different on each kid, and each kid, like, you throw the card, and like, you're the green dot. You're the yep. red dot. Yep. You're, and and it works like a charm. So he's the mastermind behind it, as always, you know. So I just kind of motivate. Well, man, I, I appreciate your time today. I hope you're staying fairly sane. And uh, we're trying to do – everybody's trying to do the same thing. I think it's fascinating, though, to find out what everybody's doing to, to try to pass the time and uh, keep themselves from uh, going completely stir crazy. So I'm glad to hear you're, you're doing fairly well. And I do think it's a great idea that you guys are doing this. Uh, I think to get a, you know, a little snapshot of home during this unique time, uh, it shows a little bit more of the personnel that people are real. And, you know, it's the first time I get to wear flannel on TV ever, you <laughs> yeah. know, you know, I'm in a hoodie. So like, I'm I mean, going casual. Like, I mean, this is like, home. Right. It's like, thank goodness. I get to wear, I get to wear this because that's what I want to wear. But you know, um, that's a whole nother topic. I actually think, and not to, not to riff on something else. I think we dress up too much sometimes in sports TV. I don't think people really care for in suits. I, I would I agree. We're starting to see that. That's yep. my opinion. I, I don't make the rules, but I wouldn't mind seeing somebody in a polo that's announcing football. Oh, in my opinion. I, you know, they, they can get away with it in golf sometimes. So why can't, right. uh, why can't we get football or basketball so, or whatever? There you go. And neither right, of us man. is wearing makeup either, right? So No, and we still look decent. At least I think we do. <laughs> hey. Except for the hair on my neck and ears. <laughs> right. Nobody can see that. Okay. We're good. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. And uh, good luck uh, staying sane at home. All right, Tim. See you, bud. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Jay Lehman. Uh, we'll connect you to all of his social media stuff down below. So you can find him online, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. Also, more at-home interviews are coming your way soon. If you don't want to miss any of them, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you would, and we'll catch you next time on At Home with Tim Sinclair.